It is uh, exciting to, to uh, be able to come and talk about the project that we've been working on for about three years now, the Life Cycle Assessment Tool. Uh, my, myself, I'm Roger Bryan, I'm an Environmental Program Specialist with Alberta Agriculture. My colleagues that are working on this project are Carrie Ann Kohler Monroe, Ang Mo, Tom Goddard, and Len Krasinowski. So the project that we've been working on, it's a very ambitious project. It's looking at the life cycle, uh, the total life cycle assessment from uh, to the farm gate for the four commodities, canola, potato, chicken and egg. The objectives were uh, for this project to really start to build capacity to understand and develop and utilize environmental footprints for primary agriculture commodities. We uh, also uh, object objective was to develop the databases and inventories that are applicable to Alberta and, and, and can be transferable to the Prairie region. And we also wanted to use those methodologies and processes that were nationally and internationally recognized. And we knew right from the start that uh, undertaking a project of this scale required a collaborative approach. So when we looked at the different commodities that uh, we, first of all, a couple of the commodities, chicken and egg, approached us to, to do this type of work. And we also looked at canola and potato because of their high economic value to the province. And when we looked at who could do this job, uh, Qantas Canada is one of the world's leaders in life cycle assessment. Uh, uh, and so they're, they're from Montreal, but they work on an international basis. So I guess for those people that aren't familiar with life cycle assessment, it's really a decision making tool to identify environmental burdens or hotspots as some people uh, refer to them and evaluate the environmental consequences of the product through its life cycle stages. And in this case, a lot of products, they will go from uh, the start of, uh, of what they call a cradle all the way to the end use uh, uh, and the waste uh, disposal of that product. But in the case of our project, we look just at the farm gate. And it is, um, uh, we, the approach is used uh, is uh, under the IOS standard of the 1440-1444 standard. This diagram essentially looks at what, what we followed in, in our uh, project. So we looked at, you know, what kind of inputs do the farmers use? Is that all, that includes everything from pesticides to, uh, you know, the, the materials that are used in their tractors, all of that. So it's a very, very uh, uh, data intensive uh, uh, research project. And then it goes on to the, the farm uh, operations that includes you know, the buildings, your, your uh, field operations, all of those types of uh, aspects. And then if you were to follow it all the way through, uh, this is where we essentially stop, but then you look at how are those products being brought to market, their use, and then of course their end use. And, and in this uh, life cycle assessment approach, these are all the factors that you're going to be looking at from the impacts on the environment. And ultimately, what ends up happening is you, you put them all into these various categories. So you actually have ratings on all of these different categories based on your evaluation and assessment. And one of the things that you have to do, as I mentioned, was you have to determine what the scope of your research will be on a life cycle assessment. And in the case of our uh, project, we're looking at right to the farm gate. Now, when Rob asked us to do this presentation, and I knew that I was later in the program, I asked, how would Dave do it? <laughs> so today we're going to do the early show. You guys woke up right at 8 o'clock, and we're going to do the top 10 lessons that we learned working on this project over the last three years. So that, that, number 10, and, and Rob, I guess there's in no particular order, sorry. I know some people are expecting the last one to be the greatest lesson that we've learned, but that may not be the case. <laughs> so there are a number of reasons that companies are doing life cycle assessment. And I know with agriculture, we're just starting to get into this business. And one of the things is really from our perspective, we thought, uh, was the looking at the hotspots. Now, a lot of people will say, well, gee, we can use these results to compare alternatives. But that's one of my other lessons learned that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about in one of my uh, next slides. 
So when you're looking at this thorough assessment of any product, you're going to be looking at how can you make decisions uh, and invest your resources to make improvements for environmental uh, 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 impacts. So that this whole process allows you to set some goals and measure progress. Uh, in particular interest for the ag industry, uh, this project has allowed us to benchmark some of our performances for the four commodities that we worked on. And once you've identified some of those hot spots from an environmental perspective, you're looking at how can I mitigate risk, what kind of improvements should we start to look at. And of course, as Paul touched on, nowadays uh, there's more and more concern by our major buyers as well as uh, consumers on what kind of sustainability uh, aspects we are looking at when it comes to our food production. So really the LCA is also a tool that we can use to communicate and substantiate our environmental performance. Now with this project you can appreciate that uh, working with the four commodity associations that we really had to uh, engage in dialogue with them. First of all, just to look at all the different aspects of production, you really have to have a good understanding of all the processes, all the practices, all the inputs that go into that. So dialogue, and we were very fortunate that all these associations have some very good staff that, allow, that uh, provide us with a lot of technical information as well as uh, you know just the support the next step in this project we're almost uh, finishing up our uh, our, our uh, uh, initial research the next step is how we're going to communicate some of these results to the members of these various commodity associations so i guess number eight uh, lesson learned rob is clearly defined boundaries and scope and assumptions are required for those people in the room that have looked at lcas you know this is a critical starting point for uh, any any study of this type. This is an example of the, the systems boundaries that were established for the uh, AG LCA. So you can see it's almost like a hockey game. What's, what's in the boards and what's out of the boards? So, <laughs> and what's going to be included in your analysis, like utilities and, and uh, one of the things that uh, you know, was touched on from uh, Paul's discussion is within Alberta, where do we get most of our energy and how is that evaluated from an environmental perspective if it's coming from coal burning uh, plants? That is actually one of the disadvantages to our producers uh, from an LCA perspective is that our, uh, our impacts from an environmental perspective in energy is increased because of that. But you can see this is the type of discussions that we had with the commodity associations. What sort of inputs go into all of these areas? What kind of processes are used once they get into the barn? And uh, a decision that was made was that we would go all the, all the way to the egg washing and grading. And then from there, that's how we determined our uh, impact analysis. I did mention this already. Number seven uh, lesson learned was really that uh, to undertake a project like this, it has got a tremendous amount of data as well as information that you need to understand all the processes and, and practices that go into the production of, uh, uh, of any of these commodities. I stole this photo from you, I guess, Paul. But even looking, like, like uh, you think about looking at all these commodities, <laughs> and I thought I knew a lot about the production of some of these commodities, but when you get down to the level of detail you require to do this kind of work, you have to look at all aspects of, of uh, the production, and this one being potatoes. Data, 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 was uh, that's a real lesson. Where do you get the data from? Well, that's one of the, the things that we learned was that, uh, and I know Paul and Sheila touched on that record keeping, record keeping, record keeping could be the title of this slide, is that we actually found out that there wasn't the data available that was uh, for the Alberta context. So we actually had to work with the associations to gather. They had some of their own research data. We also had to go out and do some uh, surveys of the farmers themselves to get the data that we wanted, as well as I think some of the people in this room supplied some very good data sources for us to provide uh, to Qantas to do the LCA analysis. 
Now this, uh, this slide I love because it just sort of shows the complexity of when, once you've got this data, how do you, how do you actually use it to start to calculate uh, some of the impacts that are, that are uh, occurring in our egg production systems. So again, you need data to fill in these boxes in order to do that uh, analysis. Uh, number five lesson was the caution. Caution is really advised when comparing LCA results. And I know even with the commodity groups, they're very, very cautious. Okay, how do, well, uh, yet they're cautious, but they really want to know how they rank in comparison to some of the other LCA studies that have uh, been done uh, across the world. So for example, they, we, we uh, did challenge Qantas to look at some of the other research areas, uh, studies that have been done across, uh, well, particularly across the world. Where do we rank? Uh, we look pretty good, actually, when it comes to a lot of the, the commodities that we looked at. This is in a draft format, but really, uh, when the egg farmers looked at this, they said, that's pretty good. We're right up there. We're, we're especially as a supply managed, uh, we rank right up there with uh, the rest of the Canadian producers, even though, as I mentioned earlier, our energy sources from a, from a climate change or greenhouse gas emission stage is a lot higher than some of the other provinces that we're, we're being uh, uh, compared with. So I guess the big caution when we looked at these studies was, again, what were the boundaries? What were the scope of the projects? What was in and out of that hockey rink when you look at comparing these different results? So again, very cautious. This is probably not something that we're going to promote uh, a lot of. It just gives a really good benchmark for the commodity associations to look at how they rank compared to some of the other uh, uh, jurisdictions that are producing the, the same commodities. One of the things, uh, uh, my colleague Ung will talk about this, is when we looked at the canola LCA, we made a conscious uh, decision to include carbon sequestration in the, in the carbon, uh, from the carbon offset perspective. And Ung will talk about that. But when you're comparing uh, studies from other jurisdictions, they did not include that. So, but again, if you put that in your report and you, and you make clear that that was uh, part of your uh, analysis, that's something that I know will get lots of interest uh, when, our, when our reports are looked at by other jurisdictions because of the fact that we did include carbon uh, uh, sequestration. Now, from the Commodity Association, uh, really, from a farmer or a, a, a primary producer, they want to know where their hotspots are, what what uh, practices or processes are really the the ones that they have to uh, focus on as far as being able to make improvements on, and that's something that we found out in our LCA that that's a key learning. For example, with eggs, this is looking at climate change. Which are the areas that they can uh, really focus on to? to work with their producers to make some improvements. Well, when you look at it, feed, the feed uh, area is, is the most uh, 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 highest sort of impact in this category. And you look at it and it's got, uh, you know, the fertilizers, of course, is going to be one of those major areas. And, and in farm operations, anywhere where they can uh, reduce their uh, or, or improve their energy efficiency is going to help them reduce their environmental footprint. And why is this important? Well, when you look at food production, uh, you look at these first two categories, uh, the crop production and the milk production. So it's getting to be more and more known that the primary portion of any food product is going to be, have the highest uh, environmental impact. And a lot of farmers will say, well, we're taking nothing and, and, and using all those natural resources to produce a product. So naturally, it is going to be the highest impact when it comes to uh, environmental issues. So again, uh, it really identifies hotspots where farmers can make improvements uh, and improve their efficiencies as well. So it, you know, when you talk about sustainability, you look at the environmental sustainability, but from a farmer's perspective, really from an economic sustainability, this uh, type of work will really help. Uh, an example of this is the egg farmers. They're, they're already incorporating some of this LCA data, uh, information into some of the programming that they're doing with their producers. Uh, they're looking at uh, 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 convincing 
uh, government to uh, provide some more funding to address some of these issues too. And Growing Forward is already doing that from an energy efficiency standpoint. And they, uh, the egg farmers, they're launching this month a new environmental farm plan for their members and they've included some of the information from this study into their energy efficiency um, uh, recommendations for their producers. Now, uh, again, this type of information, how do you bring it down to the farm level? Well, one of the things that we've done as part of the project is develop what uh, they, they call an environmental footprinter. So based on the LCA results that we've got, farmers can actually go in and, and put in their own information from their own farm to look at how they uh, rate as far as uh, on a provincial level as well as uh, they can actually go in and put in some new scenarios as well and see how that makes a difference in all the different categories within their uh, their footprint. And last but not least, uh, Rob, I'm going to re-emphasize what Paul and what Sheila had said that really this type of work, uh, Alberta is uh, a, a leader in it and it is starting to be recognized by our, uh, some of the major buyers and consumers that sustainability, that their expectations of, uh, of us as an industry, the ag industry is increasing. So tools like LCA, some of the work that's being done uh, when it comes to the carbon work, these are things that uh, are being paid attention to by our major buyers that are now looking at, okay, what are the key performance indicators when it comes to environmental sustainability that's being built into our uh, ag industry? So with that, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that this uh, 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 research and study has been funded uh, uh, through the Agri-Flexibility Fund as part of Canada's Economic Action Plan.